Speak Student. Franz Kafka, narrated by Gregor Samsa. Hello, guten Tag. So you've come to escape the nightmare of reality to enter another man's life. Good choice. As you can imagine, no man or creature is better suited to guide you. My world is my creator's. Herr Franz Kafka. As he once said, as soon as you admit to yourself that it is you yourself, you feel as though transfixed and are horrified. Well, prepare to be horrified. Born July 3rd, 1883 in Prague, my creator Franz was the first of six children. It was a brief, bleak life for the Kafka siblings. His two brothers died in infancy and his three sisters were murdered by the Nazis during the Holocaust, which Franz did not survive long enough to see. Franz was raised in a middle-class Jewish family, though not particularly observant. Feelings of isolation consumed Herr Kafka's life. He even feared his own father, seeing him as an arrogant brute, though he kept that to himself, and wisely so. Franz attended German language schools up through college, where he eventually studied law. A decent student, but far from a standout, his passion was elsewhere. It was in the literary club that he excelled. Here, Herr Kafka found not only his passion, but also lifelong friends, including Max Brod, his eventual literary executor and biographer. Though I think I'm doing a fine job myself. Uh, thank you very much. A couple years after graduating college in 1906, young Franz worked at the Workers Auto Insurance Institute government agency, handling workers compensation insurance. Very exciting, kind of like an NFL quarterback. And yes, uh, the work was, in fact, as inspiring as it sounds. As in, it was not. It was simply a means to make money. Every day consisted of work until early afternoon, then lunch, rest, exercise, and then dinner with the family. At the time, Franz still lived at home, which is a nightmare in its own right, no? Finally, at about 11 p.m., there was time to sit down and write until sleep overtook him. Despite such a busy schedule, hard work paid off. After just a few months, Hyperion magazine published his first series of short stories, but that wasn't enough for Franz. Nothing could calm his appetite to write, and he even once said, God does not want me to write, but I, I must. Kafka, the original rebel without a cause, yes, that was him, like uh, James Deansky. In the late 1920s, anti-Semitism began to spread through Eastern Europe. This deeply upset Herr Kafka. His relationship with Judaism was uh, complicated. He admired its writing and theater, but was disgusted by how his identity as a Jew alienated him from what was considered the norm. This suffering only worsened his depression and anxiety. Kafka said, what an effort to stay alive. Erecting a monument does not require the expenditures of so much strength. But there was a shining light among the sadness and woe. In 1912, at Max Brod's house, Kafka met and fell in love with Felice Bauer. They exchanged over 500 letters in their five years together. That same year, Herr Kafka's first book, Contemplations, a collection of short stories, was published. In 1914, he published what many consider to be his most Kafka-esque story, The Trial. Kafka-esque, as in happy sunshine and rainbows, raining skittles. Just kidding. It's actually more dark rain clouds and spiders and stuff. Okay, well, in The Trial, Joseph K., the protagonist, is arrested for an unnamed crime. No one will explain what he was arrested for or why. He is then hounded by shadowy authority figures following him everywhere he goes. This dark tale was an eerie foreshadowing of the totalitarian rule that swept Europe years later. That's right, in addition to his writing talents, Kafka was a bit of a fortune teller too. He should have gone into the stock market. Huh. That April, Kafka overcame his nerves and proposed to Felice, and then lost that nerve and broke it off three months later. Well, three years later, Kafka realized his mistake and proposed again, then broke it off again five months later. Poor Fraulein Bauer, kind of like Penny and Leonard. Yeah. Finally, in December 1915, the world was blessed with Kafka's greatest work, the Metamorphosis. This was the only novel my creator completed in his lifetime. The story is about me, Gregor Samsa. I was a simple traveling salesman until I woke to find myself transformed into this, a bug, insect, vermin. I don't know how it happened, but I literally transformed into what I have always felt myself to be. 
stranger to my home, stranger to my family, and even stranger to myself. I have Herr Kafka's feelings toward his own life to thank for my metamorphosis. There's so much alienation in this book, it might as well be called E.T. Anyway, enough about me. The next stage of Franz's life is dreary enough. In August of 1917, he began to cough blood, the first sign of tuberculosis. Franz had to take leave from work, the one perk of being sick, and was taken care of by his younger sister, Ottilie. He traveled to various sanatoriums throughout Europe, but his health continued to deteriorate. In 1920, knowing death was near, he asked Max Broad to burn all but a few of his papers. Thankfully, Max did not carry out this wish, or I would not be the famous critter I am today. A complication of tuberculosis made it painful for Herr Kafka to eat. Mirroring his main character in A Starving Artist, Kafka slowly starved to death. In June of 1924, Franz Kafka passed away. He was only 40 years old. A short, tragic life, much like the bleak short stories he left behind. Alas, he is gone in body, but not in spirit. Kafka's tales of struggle still speak to us today from beyond the grave. His pain then is our pain now. A never-ending search for identity, for love, and for meaning in a world that seems to pay no mind to these pains that plague our minds. On that uplifting note, have a wonderful day, and watch out for rolled-up newspapers. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ew!